are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Hawkeye Nation, to another episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, your daily podcast covering your Iowa Hawkeyes on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I am your host, Andrew Wade. We did have a men's basketball game this weekend. We're going to be breaking that down on the show today. We're also going to be diving into 2023 recruiting. So 2022 recruiting, mostly done. Iowa could be taking a few transfers. They could be maybe grabbing one or two more guys at the end of or the beginning of February. However, let's turn our attention to 2023 because this class has the potential to be something very, very special. Before we get into any of that, though, I want to thank you all for making the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast your first listen every single day. You can find the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast for free wherever you get podcasts at and also on YouTube by searching Locked On Hawkeyes. And today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. So as I said, Iowa had a men's basketball game this weekend in Sanford, the Sanford Pentagon. They take down Utah State. Not a top 25 team by any means, but a very good, solid basketball team with very good players on it. And Iowa took care of business. We learned a couple things about the Hawks in this game. So before the game even started, I said, what I want to see is if Keegan Murray is actually healthy or not. He sprained his ankle, hasn't really performed well the last couple of games, and he finally got some rest, eight to nine days of rest. Could he perform well? Defensively, could we turn it on? It's been kind of a struggle for us the last couple of games defensively, and rebounding has been the biggest issue. Why? We have not gotten ourselves off the court in a, in a, in a in theory, right? Like when we're when the offense has the ball, when the opposing team's offense has the ball, we are not getting the rebounds we need to. We're allowing the opposing team to get those offensive boards, extend the possession, and ultimately capitalize on us not getting that board. And I want to see, could Iowa figure it out rebounding-wise? We did. So I want to talk about that as well. I was curious, when and how much is Fran going to lean on the backup guard duo of Aaron Euless and Tony Perkins. I know a lot of people are very concerned about the starting lineup and why aren't we seeing Perkins in that starting lineup? There's a couple reasons why. We're going to talk about Jordan Bohannon and what that means for the Hawkeye offense here in a few short moments. But also, it's really kind of a, a 50-50 grab at this point. It doesn't matter who's starting. It matters who plays the most at the end. And then finally, Patrick McCaffrey. Can he be the complimentary player to Kiki Murray that we are looking for? I think the answer is yes, but there's another guy who was emerging as well, and we're talking about all that. So let's get into it. First, rebounding has been such a big issue for the Hawks in this three-game skid. Against Utah State, granted, not a great rebounding team, but neither was Iowa State coming into this game or coming into their game against Iowa. They out-rebounded Utah State 35 to 23 and 10 to 2 on the offensive glass. That is huge for the Hawks and made all the world a difference in this route of Utah State. So Iowa able to get back into the rebounding groove. We saw a lot of guys get involved. And a lot of it, as we've heard from Fran McCaffrey, you can only coach so much. A lot of it is effort. A lot of it is wanting to get it. A lot of it is wanting to be there, not allowing yourself to leak out, looking for transition opportunities. You have to get the ball first. I think Fran McCaffrey clearly emphasized that with the Hawks. Now, we go into a little bit more of a non-conference schedule. Iowa should have no problem winning the rebound battle. What's really going to be a true test is those first couple games in Big Ten play. Can Iowa keep up this intensity on the glass? If they can, that makes this a dangerous team. Now, defensively, they started off a little bit weak, right? Utah State got off to a, a nice little lead pretty early on, putting up 27 points before we knew it. Uh, Justin Bean had 10 or 11 points. Uh, Utah State star player, he only finished with 17 points after getting into foul trouble. And defensively, I felt like Iowa looked a lot better after that 12-minute mark or 10-minute mark in the first half. Defensively, they picked it up and only allowed, I think, 50 points from that point on. So a much better defensive effort after the initial couple uh, couple of minutes into that game. Keegan Murray being healthy, I think the answer is clearly yes. Keegan Murray is now healthy. He looked pretty darn good. He drew 10 fouls from Utah State. They clearly wanted to stop Keegan Murray, which is going to get us into our point about Patrick McCaffrey and a surprise guy who is really stepping up as of late. Keegan Murray setting another career high in terms of points. He was really doing it all 
Uh, Iowa's chances of going to the NCAA tournament and going far in the NCAA tournament really rely on Keegan Murray. There's a reason why he's talked about as a top 15 NBA draft pick. It's because he can literally do everything. He is the perfect version of what NBA scouts and coaches want in the NBA today. As far as the guard play, now, what we've seen through the first part of the season is Aaron Eulis and Tony Perkins do deserve a ton of minutes. And Joe Toussaint, to this point, doesn't seem to have figured it out yet. He still plays a little bit too reckless, still plays a little bit too out of control. Now, he does, he plays really well, Patrick McCaffrey and Keegan Murray, but I mean, you got to play a bit more under control for a team that prides itself on not turning the ball over. Joe Toussaint had three turnovers out of Iowa's nine turnovers and only 16, 17 minutes of play against Utah State. You cannot have that. There is no reason for it. And that's why you're seeing Aaron Uless get into the game a bit more. He plays a bit more calm and collected. Tony Perkins has been honestly the biggest surprise of the season, in my opinion, playing fantastic minutes. And we're really seeing Aaron Uless, Tony Perkins, Joe Toussaint, and Jordan Bohannon play roughly equal minutes. So when you're looking, and we talk about this a lot, but it doesn't matter who's starting. It matters who's actually playing in the game. And once Fran figures that out through the game flow, they're in. Now, I want to call out the fact that Jordan Bohannon, a lot of people want to hate on Jordan. They want to hate on the fact that, you know, he's been playing forever, can't play that good a defense, not the most athletic guy. But Utah State specifically called out Jordan Bohannon and how dangerous he was to be on the floor. And the fact they had to assign a guy on him at all times Because he can space the floor and he can really put you in tough situations when he gets going and can hit his shots. That's why Jordan Mohannon gets so many minutes. The other thing I want to talk about is Patrick McCaffrey. No, Patrick McCaffrey has all of the tools to be a star player for the Hawks. It's a matter of putting it together. Now, we know Keegan Murray is the star of this team, this year's team. Patrick McCaffrey could very well be the guy next year. But I haven't seen him be that fantastic complimentary player. And I thought he did a really good job in this game. Four of six shooting for 12 points. Got involved, a few assists, running the floor. I thought Patrick McCaffrey did a much a very good job in this game. And I'd like to see that translate into Big Ten play. But Chris Murray is really the big story to me. We're seeing a three-headed monster kind of appear. And it is Keegan, Patrick, and Chris. You have three six-foot-eight guys leading the team in scoring. Three six foot eight guys play fantastic defense and get into passing lanes. That is tough for any team to deal with. Yes, you might not be the tallest team, but you are without a doubt the longest and lankiest team. A team that has three guys six foot eight who can drive to the basket is not very common. It's a good problem to have. But Chris Murray has really been one of the bigger surprises this season as well. Now, we knew last season a lot of people were asking me, why isn't Chris playing? Is he just not that good? No, there was a log jam at that forward position. But there's not now. And Chris is showing why he was also a recruit for Fran and a priority recruit for Fran McCaffrey. He doesn't have the exact same game as Keegan. And honestly, that works perfectly. Chris is more of a shooter. Keegan can drive. And in this game, Chris, 17 points, 3 of 4 from the field for 2, 3 of 4 from 3-point line, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 block, 2 steals. Again, his game is not the exact same as Keegan, but he has a lot of the same type of attributes. And them being on the floor together was very effective against Utah State, and I would love to see that combo a bit more going forward. The only other thing I want to call out is the one thing that I've noticed is that although they talk about how the chemistry is there and how they understand each other and know how to play with each other, I don't think Fran has really figured out what his rotation is. He knows who his top seven, eight guys are, but... I don't know if he's really found out what is his best lineup to this point. So he's still kind of mix, mixing and matching a few things. Um, and, and it's worked for the most part, but um, that'll be something I'm watching going into the remaining part of non-conference play and the first part of Big Ten conference play. Uh, the, the, the the lineups have not really seemed to be – it's definitely been more of like a flow of the game type of feel, but I don't feel like he knows exactly who he needs to go to at all times. And that'll be something I'm definitely watching going into remaining games. Coming up, we're going to talk about recruiting a lot. So we have the 2023 recruiting class. And also, what is Iowa going to do for the 2023 recruiting class? How many tight ends? How many wide receivers? How many offensive linemen are they going to take? We're going to cover that all in a few short moments. But I have told you time and time again about price picks. So if you haven't tried it, why not? 
Prize Picks makes college basketball way more exciting. It's also so much fun to watch college football as well, as you are basically here. I guess I'll just explain it to you right now. Prize Picks allows you to pick two to five players. You pick an over under on their projections, and you can actually 10x any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Plus, they allow you to do mixed sport entries, basketball and football. And they have all of the major players as well as mid major players you might not have even heard of. For basketball, for example, you can pick any prop they have. They have points, rebounds, assists, threes made, and more. So it really gives you a lot of versatility to mix and match your lineup, you versus the projected numbers. Again, entries can be made within 60 seconds or less. They offer safe and fast withdrawal. So why haven't you tried prize picks yet? Don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. And again, thank you all for making the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast your first listen every single day. I really appreciate it 100%. But also make sure to check out the Ultimate College Football Playoff Preview 2021. Local experts, betting advice, and draft analysis, the most comprehensive college football playoff preview began on Friday. So you can get it now. Check it out. It is phenomenal to listen to. So let's get into it, though. 2023 recruiting. I know we just kind of almost closed the book on 2022 recruiting. As I mentioned, there's still going to be some things that pop up. There's still a chance Iowa brings in a few more guys. They're definitely looking at the transfer portal for interior offensive line play and, well, just offensive line play across the board and a little bit on the defensive line. Uh, Iowa fans would love for them to take a look at the quarterback spot, but I don't think we're going to see that here. But offensive line, defensive line, be on the lookout for that for Iowa. However, we turn our attention to 2023. So let's start with, really, what do they feel like they need in this class? When I look at it, and a lot of this comes down to projecting who could leave, projecting who they had coming in in the 2022 class. When I look at this, here's what I feel like they're going to do from a recruiting class perspective. I think, so looking at wide receiver, they grabbed three in 2021. They grabbed, they're grabbing one in 2022 with Jacob, uh, Jacob Bostic. I think they'll grab two to three wide receivers in this class because by that time, Nico's more than likely gone. Charlie's definitely gone. You lost a lot of guys in the transfer portal. So they're getting pretty slim there. I think they'll bring two to three wide receivers at that point. Tight end, I think Iowa would always be down to take one to two tight ends every single class. The fact that they did not get a tight end in a class of 2021 means, in my opinion, they're going to take two this year. Yes, they just got two in this past class with Addison Ostranga and also with Kale Vanderbush. You look at the way they handled uh, 2018 and 29, or sorry, 2019 and 20. 20 recruiting they took multiple tight ends in both those classes now with iowa and tight end they do a really good job of figuring out do they make sense at tight end i think tight end is one of the more versatile positions for the iowa staff you can move them to tackle do you feel like they have the size to be tackled they have the athleticism but do they have the size or you can move them over to the uh, defensive line uh, which is what they did with logan lee Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities there for the Iowa Hawkeyes when they when they are grabbing tight end recruits. I think we see two tight ends in the class of 2023. I think you'll see two defensive backs. Now, yes, you just grabbed four defensive backs in this previous class, in the class of 2022. I think you still need to grab at least two defensive backs. There's a couple of guys that are going to be leaving, but you need a lot more depth. And especially because you don't expect Xavier to be there for all five years. So it's not like you're expecting, or all four years, not like you're expecting those defensive backs to be there for a very long time. Iowa still needs a ton of depth there. I expect them to take probably two defensive backs. There's a couple guys in the state of Iowa that they're actually looking at, and Alex Moda and Jamison Patterson. So we're going to talk about that as well. As far as linebacker goes, uh, linebacker is a really interesting spot for Iowa because they're not playing a lot of 4-3 like they used to. They're playing a lot more 4-2-5. Now they figured out how to get Justin Jacobs involved a bit more with Seth, Seth Benson and Jack Campbell. But there are a lot of linebackers behind them. A lot. You think about Jay Higgins, Zach Tweet, Carson Schrader. There's a lot of guys that are waiting in the wings, just waiting to get their opportunity to play. Plus, Iowa brought in two linebackers in this upcoming class, the class 2022. So class 2023, I expect them to take probably one linebacker. Kind of what they did with Jay Higgins uh, two years ago. I expect just one linebacker in this class. Offensive linemen and defensive linemen, Iowa's always going to take at least three of those, without a doubt. Now, they have a ton of young defensive linemen, so probably erring on the side of three defensive linemen, considering they just had a pretty good defensive line class with Caden Crawford and Aaron Graves. 
I would expect offensive line probably airing more on the side of four to five. Now, we talked about this past class. It was a bit smaller of a class. This upcoming class is also going to be a bit interesting. It's going to really depend on what guys want to use an extra year of eligibility and how do some of the guys that are ready to step into a starting role develop. But again, I think it's probably going to be three three defensive linemen, probably four to five offensive linemen. I will love taking a running back. We're definitely going to take a running back in this class. And I know it's kind of weird to talk about, but you have to be looking at punter. Torrey Taylor is eligible to go to the NFL right now. I know he wants to, to finish and get his, degree, get his degree, but what if he decides to leave after next year? Or even if he does decide to leave the following year, what does it hurt to have a punter on your team that can back up Torrey Taylor? We've seen so many Australian rules punters come in and have a lot of success. I think Iowa needs to target another guy like a Torrey Taylor. Obviously, I, I realize that you can't just find a Torrey Taylor on the street, but there is you know, a campus down in Australia. They're doing a really good job of coaching up punters. Iowa needs to find another guy who can flip the field like Torrey Taylor, and you need to offer him a scholarship. Get him to come there. Don't you know? hope for a Drew Stevens to stick around with the preferred walk-on opportunity. You need to go there and get your punter. And again, as I said, Iowa loves to take at least one running back. The fact that they just took two running backs in this class does not stop them, does not mean they do not get a running back. But running back doesn't necessarily become as big of a priority, but they need to at least get one. You always want one running back. Just like with quarterback, they always take one quarterback. You always want one running back. So that's kind of the needs for the class of 2023. Coming up, we're going to talk about a few of the guys who could fill those needs. That's all coming up here in a few short moments. Before we get to that, though, I want to remind you that Bet Online. .ag has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football season continues to march the playoffs and as college basketball begins ramping up into conference play, BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So head over to their new updated desktop or mobile website, sign up today, and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you need to do is use the promo code LOCKEDON, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. And this holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, or even better than a candy bar, it is a built bar. Filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavors, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, but high in protein, you get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. Plus, they have so many flavors, you're honestly going to have a hard time choosing, so grab a couple and keep checking back because they keep coming out with new limited time offers like eggnog or white chocolate birthday cake with sprinkles. So make sure to check out all those Built Bars that are coming out. And if you haven't tried the Built Puffs, you have to try that out as well. A little bit. Different consistency, light and fluffy, a bit more marshmallowy. Get the puff flavor there through and through. They are phenomenal as well. So go to built.com, B U I L T.com, and use the promo code LOCKED15, L O C K E D15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. So if you haven't tried Built Bar, why not? We are giving you an offer today at built.com, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your next order. All right, y'all. And we've talked about the Iowa basketball team and how they took down Utah State. We talked a little bit about what are Iowa's needs going into this recruiting class. Now we're going to talk about who are the guys they are targeting in this recruiting class. And really, this is really, really good timing because I had put this guy down here um, on my kind of rundown when I was creating the agenda for the show. And he does officially decommit from the University of Florida. That is Mac Markway, a top 100 tight end out of St. Louis. He is a Iowa legacy, but he committed to Florida last year or early this year. I can't even remember. It's been a while. And since Dan Mullen has left, he has now decided to decommit. There's an opportunity here for Iowa to continue rolling on that momentum. Use Xavier. Use Marco. Use those guys to try to get you a Mac Markway, a top 100 tight end recruit, a guy who had a ton of offers. Going into the previous time where he committed, he was really between Florida and Notre Dame. Iowa did make his top seven, though, so there is some room there. Now, as we saw with Xavier, there's always a chance. You have to take your chance. you got to give it a whirl. See 
if you can make some ground with Mac Markway, that would be a huge recruiting win for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Along those lines, Caden Proctor, the cream of the crop for this class, a top 10 player in the entire class. He doesn't want to be compared to Tristan Wirfs, but there's just so many similarities, it's hard not to. This is a guy who could step in and start at tackle his very first day for the Iowa Hawkeyes. That's incredible. Iowa is in the driver's seat here. Now, again, as we saw for Xavier, and that's going to be really um, our baseline for recruiting, things can change. And it's important that Iowa continues the pressure and the momentum on Caden while also winning next year. As we saw with Xavier, that Penn State, and as we saw with several Iowa recruits, that Penn State game really, really switched things up for them. That was huge for the Hawks. Seeing the momentum of them getting up to six wins was huge for recruiting. They need to have a good start as well. They are in the driver's seat for Caden Proctor. It's a matter of finishing it out. Can they get a five-star recruit in the state of Iowa? That would be a huge win for the Hawks in back-to-back years. Now, there's two other guys who I think are really, really big-time recruits in this class. It is Kyler Casper, a guy who, again, Hawkeye legacy. We've had Kevin on the show. Kevin is one of my favorite players of all time. Kevin dies and bleeds black and yellow, or black and gold. He would love to see Kyler in a Hawkeye uniform. But he also would love to see the best thing for Kyler. And so they are keeping their options open. And they are evaluating things, trying to be as unbiased as possible. I think Kyler could either stay on the West Coast, go to a UCLA, a USC, now especially with Lincoln Riley there. Or Kyler goes to Iowa. You could also throw in Ohio State there as well, just because they've done such a good job of developing wide receivers and they get them more involved in the offense. I think there's three things Iowa has going for in his, uh, in his favor. Obviously, the legacy connection there. Kyler has grown up knowing these coaches. LeVar Woods held him as a baby. You also have to see the success of Arlen and Keegan early on. That's what Kyler can do as well. And then also, you look at the fact that Iowa already got its quarterback commit. They already got Marco. We saw what Deuce Hogan was able to do for that class of 2020. Can Marco do the same thing for the class of 2023? I think there's a chance there. Now, you also have to look at it. Iowa has not had a true X receiver. They had Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith wasn't that that big. He played bigger than what he was. But Kyler Casper could be a true X receiver for the Hawkeyes, a big man. As Iowa builds out its wide receiver group, the, the, the thing you always want to keep in mind is build a basketball team, right? You want to have a big man, kind of a center type of guy, usually going to be your tight end. You want to have a big wide receiver. That's kind of your power forward, small forward. You have a shooting guard who's kind of like your Keegan Johnson, honestly. And you have a point guard, which is Arlen Bruce. Kind of goes height-wise and also the dynamics of that position. Iowa has not had that power forward, small forward, wide receiver type in Kyler Casper. If they don't get Kyler, look for them to get Kai Black out of Urbandale. They could take both, but I think Kyler is really the highest person on the radar at this point. Caden Green is a top 100 recruit out of Lee Summit, Missouri. He's a guy who everyone thought he was going to go to Oklahoma, but Iowa was right there with Oklahoma. And with Lincoln Riley leaving, that gives Iowa a huge opportunity to get another top 100 guy. Can Brett Benevilles, the new Oklahoma head coach, can he keep the momentum with Caden Green? I don't know if you can surpass now what Iowa is doing. You have to be excited about Iowa's opportunity with Caden Green. Another offensive line we need to talk about, Dylan Senda. He is making his announcement today, and Iowa is in his top four. However, I would say this. He is more than likely not choosing the Hawks. There's some crystal balls to Michigan. There's some hype around uh, Northwestern. If Dylan Senda chose Iowa, I would be completely shocked. Now, just a couple other guys I want to quickly uh, target. We also want to watch out for three in- or four in-state guys. There's Andrew DePape a Pleasant Valley defensive end, a four-star recruit. A lot of momentum going away from Iowa. He wasn't ever really, Iowa wasn't on his radar at all. They've made some late, you know, late moment or late uh, positive gains on him, but I don't think it'll be enough. I think it's a little bit too little, too late. And it sounds like he wants to get out of the state. So I'm not sure Iowa's going to be able to grab him, but they are doing a really great job with Alex Moda and Jamison Patton, uh, both athletes. Alex Moda out of Marion, Iowa, could be the next commit in this class. Jamison Patterson, a quarterback who can play 
a lot of different positions for Roosevelt, who doesn't typically produce fantastic D1 prospects. So look out for those two guys. Aza Newman out of Waverly Shell Rock is also a guy high on Iowa's radar, radar, a top 500 player whose brother plays for Nebraska, um, could impact that recruiting a little bit. Those are the guys to watch out for at this time. Now, offers are coming in. Commits are starting to roll in a little bit. Um, as we get into the summer, expect a lot more commitments. Uh, but as the offers roll in, we'll make sure to cover all that. One of the things we're also going to kick off right here, we've talked a little bit about it. We couldn't get it done for the class of 2022. But for the class of 2023, I'm going to actually be creating a one to one and a half minute video of each commit. And we're going to be dropping it on our YouTube channel. That way you can check it out. Uh, it's not going to be you know super in-depth, but it's going to kind of give you the highlights. What does this kid bring to the table? What does his future look like for the Iowa Hawkeyes? You can get that all in a minute to a minute and a half on our Locked On Hawkeyes YouTube channel. So make sure to check that out uh, here in a few couple days. We're going to be dropping our first three here in a few short days, I guess you could say. Probably by Christmas time, you can expect um, to have those out there. That does do it for our show today. There's no Iowa basketball on. So what you can do is go to Locked On Bets podcast, hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, and find out who else you can bet on today. At betonline.ag, the Locked On Bets podcast has you covered right there for all of your betting needs. That does do it for our show today, though. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I hope you have an even better Monday. And as always, Hawkeye Nation.